not been exhausted. No. So if you believe that only the tafasir give you the knowledge of the Quran, only the tafasir, and you're wrong. The Quran says something else that is very dramatic. And if you've not had your dinners yet, I'd suggest skip dinner. Because after listening to this, your food will not digest. The religion of Islam has zero tolerance for oppression, among other things. And every oppressor in history has been destroyed by Allah. And the Quran is replete of evidence of the destruction of previous people because of oppression. One form of oppression is, of course, economic oppression. Paying slave wages. China today rules the market, doesn't it? Not by accident, by design. China is where China is today because of slave wages. Slave wages. Today, all around the world, the economy is one in which wealth no longer circulates. And the rich are now permanently rich around the world and the poor are now in miserable poverty, imprisoned permanently. So around the world today there is oppression. And around the world there is the movement towards biting, biting uh, poverty and destitution as the value of this bogus and fraudulent and utterly haram paper money come on, collapses, goes down and down and down. So it should not be difficult for us to understand or to anticipate that Allah's destruction is coming. You can't get away from it. In Surah Al-Isra, he said it. This is a, one of the events of the Akhir Zaman. وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُبْرًا this is something inscribed in the book. That not a single town or city will escape. But we will destroy them all. And those that escape destruction, including Kuala Lumpur, would be punished with terrible punishment. So what about those of us who worship Allah. And there are so many in this room here tonight. That's why you are here to listen to the lecture, because of your love for your religion. What about those who are always performing their salat, fasting in Ramadan, giving in charity? What's going to be their state? Allah answered that as well. A very famous hadith al-Qudsi in which he sent Jibra'il alayhi salam to destroy a town. One of the reasons for destruction is oppression. And then Jibra'il alayhi salam pointed out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in that town there is the servant of yours who is constantly in Ibadah. What shall we do with him? What shall we do with him? And Allah says, destroy him and destroy the town. Meaning, that you, you and I must have zero tolerance for oppression. And zero tolerance for oppression means that you must first respond to oppression by attempting to change it with your hand. And if you cannot, then with your tongue. And if you cannot, then with your heart and get out. Don't stay there. Because Allah is going to destroy that town. 
And if you remain there, you will be destroyed with them. My opinion after writing this book, An Islamic View of Gog and Magog in the Modern World, is that that moment of destruction, where all the cities and towns of the world are going to be destroyed, and uh, only very few of mankind will survive. My understanding is it's going to come in the clash between Gog and Magog. But nobody knows the subject of Gog and Magog. Nobody knows the subject. Nobody teaches the subject. And much of the literature that we have is worthy of Disneyland. <laughs> yes. I have attempted in this book to approach the subject in a scholarly way. And I came to the conclusion that there is, the, the Quran is prophesying a clash between Gog and Magog. I've identified the Magog of the Quran with Russia today and the allies of Russia. And I've identified the Gog of the Quran with the Anglo-American-Israeli alliance which has NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. And these two are going to clash. But whenever I give my opinion, I'd be terribly disappointed if you accept it un uncritically. Terribly disappointed. I never treated, I never had that relationship with my teacher. And I hope you would not have that relationship with me. If I give an opinion, I want you to study it critically. And accept it only when you are convinced that it is correct. Otherwise you are disrespecting your own intellect. And so I have identified the Magog of the Quran with Russia and its allies. And China is going to be an ally of Russia. And I have identified the Gog of the Quran with the Anglo-American Israeli alliance. With NATO. And that these two are going to clash. But you don't need a Quran. You just have to look at the chessboard and you see that they are zealously encircling Russia with nuclear missiles. And the Russian leader is not a fool, <laughs> Putin. He's waiting for them. They're doing it because they want to rule the world. So that Israel can rule the world. So the whole world must bend down. So that the man will stand up in Israel tomorrow and declare, I am the Messiah. But you and I know he's, he's going to be the John, the false Messiah. But Russia is not going to bend down and submit to Israel. No. And China is not going to do it. The Chinese are very proud of their civilization. And they have every right to be. The Chinese in Singapore, don't bother about them. <laughs> But China is very proud of its civilization. China will not bend its knee. So you can see the script. We're moving towards that clash, which is going to be a nuclear clash, with thousands of nuclear weapons being used. And this is one of the ten major signs that were given, the Dukhan of smoke. I believe that is going to be the time when all the cities and all the towns are going to be destroyed. And the radiation that now embraces us all with the cellular phones and so on is going to play a role in reducing all, us, all of us to fried eggs. How long from now? My guess, and I can be wrong, we don't have more than about 20, 25 years left before there'll be a substantial reduction in the number of human beings on the face of the earth. Who will survive? Those who get out of that society of oppression. can be saved. Once you're within the money system, 
you are part of the system. And the money system tomorrow is not going to be like the money system today. Today's money system still has a chance for anonymous transactions. You want to buy roti chai? <laughs> you could take out your wallet, give two ringgit, get your roti chai. Nobody knows. Government doesn't know you did. You could buy tetari. Just take out your wallet, put a ringgit, two ringgit. Nobody knows you bought it, Eric. But I think that the paper money is on its way out now. 